Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this DIY plaid earring tutorial. Here is some inspiration that you can use or check out Pinterest, whatever works for you. Let's get started. Hey, you guys. So I know it's been forever. I am going to apologize because I am so sorry about it. I have just been, you already know, real estate, real estate, real estate. But for those of you that don't know me, I am Garlanda Price. I am the incredibly proud owner of Fusion Properties, LLC which is located in Fayetteville, North Carolina, home of the free and the brave. Why? Because we are also home to Fort Bragg, which is the largest military base in the country. So super excited about that. Our real estate market like yours probably is where you live has been swamped and off the chain. And so God has been really blessing me. And so has not given me a lot of time to design jewelry, but Nevertheless, here I am today, yay. And also, many of you know that we are also working on a vision board project. So I'm working on printing off the things that I need for that. That won't be a hurry up and get it done video because I really want to process and think about the things that I want on my vision board. So just know that the part two to that is coming and it'll probably be more than one part. So in case you're wondering about my bracelets and what they say, I'm gonna try to hold them that way. This one says Jesus Christ. And the second one says, God loves you. And then this one has my name, Garlinda Price. So super cute. And this little bracelet I got from my mom, she was doing a sale at her church and I've had it forever. So today we are going to be making um, two different videos. I pray two different earrings. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I have these super cute coffee mugs um, and these are actually stickers I believe that I got from or embellishments that I got from Michaels and so you're going to need two packs of these I believe they cost about $3.99 or $2.99 they don't have the prices on them but use your 50% off coupon put your child in line behind you and get them both at 50% <laughs> off right or whatever coupon they have going on sometimes Michaels has been getting funny with their coupon money right and they give you 20% off or 30% off and then randomly 50% so anyway, we're going to make these into super cute little hanging earrings. Um, we'll do that in the second video coming up after this one. But for right now, I'm obsessed with plaid, right? I don't know. I've been wanting to do a plaid earring for a minute. I don't have any clue how I'm going to do it. But these are the bases that we're going to be using, I believe, right? Or I may use these as the basis for the coffee mugs. We'll see. But also, I found these and I do like them. These are like oblong shaped craft sticks and so I'm sure I'm for sure gonna make the first pair starting with these because I feel like they have the perfect shape for plaid they have the perfect length whereas these seem a little bit shorter to work on so let's start out working on these and I think we're gonna do a round pair as well so what you're gonna need for the project today is obviously wooden pieces that you can get from your craft store from Hobby Lobby or Michaels whatever you have in your area you're also going to need some paint brushes and you're going to need several different ones. So you're going to need a chunky paint brush to cover the base of the, um, the, to do your base color, whether you're going to do navy blue, um, whether you're going to do like a forest green, if you're going to do a red, and then you're going to need some type of detailing brush to make your lines in different sizes. So these are the ones that I'm going to use and try not to knock the cup over that is holding you, right? And then I have an angled brush. Again, I've never done a plaid print, so no judgment here. Y'all don't beat me up too bad. But this is these are the paint colors I've chosen to work with. So we've got, what is this? This is ivory. So I use Craft Smart Paint or Americana. You already know that if you've watched my videos before. I don't have any particularly favorite kind, but if I did have to say one was my entire favorite, it would be this one. And it's Deco Art Americana with the satin finish. It just has great coverage. And this bottle is almost empty. It's my favorite red and I don't even like red. So we're going to be doing a plaid print using some green, some red. We're going to do a blue plaid print. And I've also inserted some pictures in here of just different print, <laughs> different prints. <laughs> different plaids to give you ideas of colors you can use. I do need to go and get a yellow paint and bring it over here because um, tartan and plaid and different plaid colors also normally has some yellows and then some beiges and all that good stuff. So let's get started. I hope you'll join me on this project. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. So my goal is to get back on track 
scheduling wise i won't make that commitment but i am going to do my best to be consistent because y'all coach women right and in coaching these incredible women i tell them to stick to a schedule so i do stick to my real job schedule right my real career which is on the real estate company i stick to my coaching schedule but i've got to get back on track with these um videos because i love doing these and i love talking to you all and connecting with you I even have to be more consistent with my ministry videos. So we're all always working towards being the best and doing the best that God has called us to be. So look, these are super cute. So they're like wide little short popsicle sticks. We're going to use a pair of those. I think we're going to use some circles. Maybe. Because I don't know how much paint we can get on the circles, but let's see. I know we're gonna do some squares, so let's just not put too many out. So what I'm gonna do and how we're gonna start is we're gonna start out painting the bases first. You're also gonna need some earring findings, which I thought I had on the table, but I must have moved them. So you're gonna need some ear wires, whatever type of hooks you want for your earrings, and you're gonna need some jump rings, okay? Hold on a second. I realize wherever I keep all of my jewelry making supplies, it's a hot mess over there. <laughs> So I need to get it cleaned up. So anyway, we're going to do a square pair that, of course, I'm going to do shape this way because I don't like square earrings per se. And then you're going to need a drill for when we do the project with the coffee cups. Y'all love coffee. I'm like, in the morning before the first sip, it's like, shh, don't say a word. And then I went and added this gold color that we're going to add to our tartan print. So the only other thing I need to go get is some water and my little paint palette, and we're going to get started. Hey, you guys. Okay, so just so you know what colors I'm using because I always forget to go and put them in the description box and I don't want to lie to you. So this red is by Deco Art Americana. It's a multi-surface satin and it is called lipstick and it really is a perfect shade of red. So that's colors lipstick. The green color we're going to be using by Americana Deco Art as well is holly green, which is a perfect color for the holidays. And I had paint on my hand. Somebody told me to use wet wipes. I still hadn't done that yet. And then the other color is Deco Art Americana in Ultra Marine Blue. So again, I've never done this before. So I'm praying that y'all will give me grace. We're going to start with the green color. And of course, we're just going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, we're going to paint the bases. And have y'all been having a good week? Like I cannot believe it's Thursday already. And guess what? My birthday is Sunday. I really honestly forgot that my birthday was this week until last week. And I think it was my son that reminded me. I was like, oh, I do have a birthday. I'll be 52. I'm so excited to be in the land of the living. You just have no earthly idea because, honey, I have done some stuff in this lifetime. So I'm going to sit those off to the side as we get them painted to dry because that's what we're going to do. And I'm also thinking the other thing that we're going to do is what's the word i'm looking for i might not do two coats i'm thinking that i might want to leave them kind of rustic like i'm not sure yet it's just going to depend on what they look like when they dry because i noticed that i do shiny coats on everything and i don't know i'm not in a shiny coat mood but it's going to depend on what it looks like and that's also going to depend on the quality of the paint that you use so now what we're going to do is i'm just going to clean my brush off right quick and I really wanted to do a black and white pair as well. But the only thing I was concerned about was I hadn't done this before. So let me just start with some easy plaid first. <laughs> and then we can attempt to do Berber print. I'm, do I'm kidding, Berber. We are not doing your print. I don't need any copyright infringements. I'm totally joking. So let's paint this one red. And this reminds me of a skateboard. So we're just going to do a healthy, generous coat. And that's why it's going to take a minute for them to dry. So let's do that. What are y'all up to? The weekend is coming up already. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it is fall. And we've had like some beautiful, cool mornings. Not cold because it's the south, right? So when I say cool, I'm talking about like 60 degrees. When y'all say cool, y'all probably, depending on where you are, you mean you may mean 20 or 30, but no. Last year, it doesn't even, without exaggerating, I think it did get to the 30s, but it was literally no snow. There was not, that I can remember, one day of ice. 
And for the most part, it seemed like every day averaged in the 40s. Maybe in the 30s was this cold. And then there were a few days when we had, um, not us, but when there was like a nor'easter or something coming down from the north, it got a little bit colder then. But for the most part, we have very mild winters here in North Carolina. Thank God, I am a southerner. Child, I just do not like cold weather. We went to New York um, for Christmas about two years ago. Whew, when I say cold, I said, I don't know how people do this. And it was cold and crowded. I said, <laughs> I said, where are all these people going as cold as it is outside? But it was so much fun because to be in New York for Christmas, I mean, I thought that was a cool thing. We were there visiting a friend of ours and we went to Rockefeller Center. We saw the people ice skating, but y'all, that line was way too long. We were like, we are not... Well, my 14-year-old wanted to wait in the line, and we were like, uh, oh, we're, um, we're not going to do that because it was freezing cold and raining. And so, anyway, I do feel kind of bad that we didn't get to ice skate, but I also am a little clumsy, and I just did not have any desire to break my ankle. I remember my sister used to live in New York. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm not laughing about what happened, but she twisted her ankle ice skating. I'm like, honey, you got to know. I'm like Clint Eastwood. A man has got to know his limitations, right? And I just was not going to do that. So anyway, I am getting this done today so we can get these videos up and rolling as it relates to jewelry making. And then I have to do my real work today um, is hunt down my real estate clients. And so one thing I teach everyone that I'm coaching with, I teach business success coaching. For those of you who don't know, my website is garlandaprice.com. And the Lord bless, has blessed me to be an entrepreneur since I was 19. Um, jewelry making was my first business in case y'all didn't know that or you're new to my channel and I show women how to make a six-figure income I coach women on how to earn a six-figure income in their business so somebody a, a really great um, coaching client that I have right now she said how can you make such a bold guarantee that's what she said when she first found my channel and I said success is guaranteed when you do the work right? And so it's not that Garlinda is making the guarantee that you can make a six-figure income. God has guaranteed us in Proverbs 14, 23, that in all labor there is profit. He also guarantees us in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, the covenant blessings if we obey the commands of God. He also has get shared with us, I've given you the ability to get wealth. In addition to that, God said, money answereth all things. He said, faith without works is dead. So the only way that we would not make the money that God has promised us that we should make and that we can make is if we don't do the work, right? Success is inevitable. It might not be easy and it might not happen for everybody at the same time because trust you me, I have some battle scars to show for success in business. But if we do the work, it's guaranteed that we will succeed because that is a covenant promise that God made. Also, we are heirs to the promise that God made Abraham. And because he called Paul to preach the good news to the Gentiles, we are included as heirs to that promise. So there is no way that you can fail if you're doing the work, right? Everybody would get to the same place, just not at the same time, to that same place of success if they don't quit. So that's how I make a guarantee that, hey, you can make, I can guarantee you that you will make a six-figure income if and when you do the work. So visit my website if you're the least bit interested in just being nosy or finding out <laughs> right, about me and my coaching services. But today we are talking all things earrings. So I'm just putting another coat. Oh, no. I should have cleaned my hands off. I know. Forgive me the person that's watching that recommended I do that with wet wipes and I still hadn't done it yet. I'm a little bit hard-headed, I guess. I'm sorry. So let's put that over there. Ah. So let's bring you back over here. I'm going to try not to touch it. And we're just putting on a second coat so it can all be drying. Because look, it's going to take a minute anyway. Let's go ahead and throw the second coat on there. So everybody has their second little coat. I'm going to go wash my hands and clean the water and I'll be right back. So I'm just painting the other side now, even though I'm not going to bore you with watching this whole thing. I'm just letting you know that we are painting the backs. And we're just going to do a smooth coat back there because you always want to make the back of your earring look as good as the front. And so what we may do on these, sorry about that, is um, may do some finger painting, which I learned from my sister Khadijah over at um, KUnity77. I love her finger painting 
video that she did. I just kind of scratched the top of that one, so we gotta fix that. So let's do that. And I'm glad that to let these dry, I'm not putting them on paper. Y'all know I always do that. If you're not new to my video, I mean, if you're new to my videos, you may not know that I do that. But sometimes I sit them on paper, not thinking about the fact they're gonna stick. I'm like, oh, that was not well intended or what I meant to happen. <laughs> so they're on actually a plastic box that you're sitting on, which is a plastic jewelry box that holds my accessory fondants. And so y'all, I'm doing my best to have a productive day. So while these are drying, you may not know this about me, but I'm an international property specialist, which means I can sell real estate. Sorry if my dog, look, he's excited about that too. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I can sell real estate internationally. So I am reaching out to some fellow realtors in other countries today that have clients that would actually be buying in our neck of the woods. So I'm hurrying up to get these painted so they can dry. So I'm not contacting my fellow compadres overseas too late in the day. That didn't get on y'all's nerves. Like somebody was messaging me last night, y'all, in all seriousness. I normally don't mind people reaching out to me about their business opportunities, although I'm not looking for another opportunity, nor am I going to join one. Um, because I have my plate full with our credit restoration business and with our um, real estate company. But she said, good morning in the Instagram message. And I said, um, hi. She said, hi. I said, hi. She said, good morning. I said, well, it's actually almost midnight here. And she was like, yeah, right. So how are you? Where are you from? Block and delete. So how disrespectful is that? That I'm telling you it's midnight. Literally, it was like 11 36, something like that. And I'm like, okay, so you're just going to disregard that I'm telling you. And I only commented because I happened to be messaging my sister, right? I, was, I wasn't on Instagram just chilling out at 11.36. I was going to go to bed. And um, she just disregarded that I said it was almost midnight. I had to block her. Okay, I'm sorry. You're not listening because it was more important for her to tell me what she wanted to know versus, hey, well, what's a good time? for me to send you a message. And it would have been today, it would have been fine. I still wouldn't have been interested in what it was, but nevertheless, today would have been better, right? So anyway, we're gonna let those dry and we're gonna go reach out to some fellow international brokers, brokers so we can do business over there. Now, I wanna encourage you that if you have a business, right? And you're like, where can I get new clients from? Where can I get additional clients from? The world is a small place thanks to the internet and the world is your oyster, right? What is it? The world is your oyster and it has your pearl or the world is your pearl and there's an oyster. I don't know, <laughs> right? But anyway, you get the point that I'm making is that there are people that will want your product or your service internationally depending on what it is. And so that's what prompted me to go about getting an international designation is because I'm in a military area where a lot of people work for the State Department. So a lot of the federal teachers um, work for the State Department. A lot of my clients come here because they get stationed here with the military. But at the same time, they loved their living overseas. And many of them are considering relocating back to overseas. They're considered expats or expatriates. Those people that don't retire or live in the country that, that, that was their original designation or where they're from. It's funny that when an American goes to another country to live, they're called expats. But when someone comes from another country to here, they're called an immigrant. Isn't that just, it's so different. So anyway... Um, think about how you can expand your business by going across the pond or how you can expand your business by going across the borders. And so just to give, I don't even know why I'm sharing this with you, but while the earrings are drying, let's talk about it. So one way for us to do that in real estate is to connect with real estate brokers in other countries that we want to do business in. So I, my slogan for Fusion Properties is from the capital to the coast, your realtor for life is trademark. Don't take it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like, yep, you can't use that, right? <laughs> and so if you have a great slogan, be sure to trademark it so that no one takes it, right? So um, that means that I work in Raleigh, North Carolina, here um, in our area, all the way down to the coast of North Carolina, where it touches South Carolina. I'm not licensed in that state. So Raleigh being such a hub, it was the third, ranked the third best place to live three years in a row, right? Out of all the countries in the United States, it's an incredible area with over half a million people, but it has, I think, no less than six direct flights overseas. And I have them written out on a piece of paper, but by them having six direct flights internationally, I know one was to the UK, one was to um, 
Montego Bay, Jamaica. One was to um, London, UK, Paris, France. And I forget some of the other ones, but by those being direct flights, you can go from Raleigh, Durham to Paris in six hours. That's huge, right? Because they're nonstop flights. So that means that that opens up an entire world. I think the Bahamas was on there as well. That opens up an entire world of opportunity as it relates to real estate and people that are flying in from those countries visiting Raleigh because it is an international hotspot and mecca for industry technology education, academics, banking, all these things are there. And so even though Raleigh is an hour and a half drive from where I live, maybe like an hour and 15 minutes. And if my husband's driving, it's like 45 minutes, right? So it behooves me to work in that market. And so I currently have clients that are looking to invest in that market in terms of multifamily properties and things like that. And so think about what's close to you. Who is your target market? Who is your client? How can you expand the opportunity for you and your business, your clients, your services in the area that you are, does it entail you driving outside your market in order to hit that mark, in order to hit the income goals that you have for yourself? So we're going to let these drive. We'll be back. That's my business tip for today. Think internationally. Think across the pond. Someone wants what you have globally. Okay? God bless you guys. I'll be right Hey, you guys. Okay, so I know that you don't notice that I've been gone because, of course, the screen is just coming back, right? So now let's go ahead and begin the process of putting some lines and stripes on our earrings. Of course, we have the green pair. We have the royal blue. I was going to say navy blue, but peacock blue. And we have the lipstick red shade. So now this is where you're going to bring your other brushes in. Now, mind y'all, I've never done this before. So I would assume that we're going to start with, let's start with the red pair. So we're not getting paint on everything else. And so what I'm thinking that we're going to do is, of course, the lines that go lengthwise, right? So we can um, start the process of making plaid. And what I think I want to do, I'm going to put some of the black paint out on my plate over here. And I think what I want to do is go ahead and do all the black lines on all of the earrings that we're going to use the black on, okay? Yeah, I'm not trying to be funny with all this jewelry on. I realized that I didn't want to lose my one of my rings, and so I put it on. I forgot it was going live again. So I'm going to lay it flat. Prayerfully, you can see it really well. And I think we're going to do like a lengthwise plant. So I'm just going to wipe some of the paint off my brush. I have about that much. And I'm just going to try to do a line all the way down. That probably is a little bit thicker line than what I wanted. But I have enough paint on here to carry me all the way through the end. And that's what it looks like. So we're going to sit that off to dry. Now mind you all, there's no right or wrong way to do this because I've never done it before. My goal was just to make some super cute plaid earrings because I love the tartan plaid print for the winter. I love cozy sweaters. I love all everything fall. I'm a fan, probably because my, like I said, my birthday is in fall. So I'm a fall kind of girl. So this one is going to hang that way. So what I think I want to do is like a plaid print that kind of goes to the side this way. Don't quote me. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Okay. And then we're just taking our black lines diagonal across. And that's what it looks like so far. And we're just going to repeat the process on here. And so again, there's no perfect way to do it, but you do want to make sure you have the same amount of lines. Let me count those right quick. Two, four, six, two, four, six, okay? So I was just making sure the green pair each had six lines, but I do want to, I see where I had some skipped spots in here. So I just want to go back over those. Okay, so now let's do the blue pair, and this is the circular pair, which I think are gonna be, I don't know, for some reason I'm thinking they might be my favorite, they're so cute. So we're just gonna go off to the side this way. And 
Y'all, I thought it would be a lot easier to find an international broker. I started out saying, okay, I'm gonna look in Germany. So if y'all know anybody, please comment in the section below. I started out looking in Germany when I tell you I found absolutely no one. Oh my gosh. Um, in terms of what I was looking for, which is a VA specializing or relocation broker in Germany. And so now I'm over in Dominican Republic, online <laughs> in Dominican Republic looking. I'm like, where, where are all the brokers? But I have to realize that real estate is done so differently in other parts of the world. So the Lord led me to Remax, to a Remax site. So I said, well, let me check a franchise because I was checking Coldwell Banker, Remax. I wasn't finding anything. I'm like, what is really going on? So anyway, so let's bring these back down here. And now we're gonna do the crossover to um, do the box part of the plaid. Again, I'm just putting enough paint to carry me across to the other side. I think these are gonna be so cute. And just think, you could do these in tons of color. Like, I didn't copy the Burberry color, but you could do something in those shades, but definitely don't copy anybody's design. I am not trying to get in trouble with anybody because I wouldn't want anybody copying my trademarks. So, and if you do have a logo or a slogan or something like that, go ahead and get a trademark. You can do it locally, but of course, you can pay the money that it costs to do it as a U.S. trademark as well. Um, because if you're going to be selling online, you definitely want to do that. So look how cute that turned out. I'm super excited and a fan of these. So let's do these as well. Same thing. We're just going to cut across the design that we have. I'm so excited to be back here designing jewelry with you all too. feel like it's been forever. And I apologize for not managing my time well. I had a couple of transactions that um, I was working with several people at once. And to be honest, it was just quite overwhelming. But I'm, I was glad to be overwhelmed because, hey, I want to stay busy. I'm all about that life. But at the same time in staying busy, um, you can still get overwhelmed sometimes, depending on how many people you're working with. My goal, my, like, do or live goal. I don't want to say do or die because I'm not trying to die going anywhere, right? But my live to live goal, I would love to be able to service 20 to 30 clients a month. Like that's, that's what I'm working towards. I believe that with God, all things are possible. Um, and that will roughly be, I mean, because people do that already. Now, a lot of people do it with a team and I do have some agents that are affiliated with our firm, but they're part time. Um, so I'm looking for a full time and part time brokers for our company. But a lot of people sell over 120 houses a year. So I definitely have it set as my goal to definitely do that. Because I have some big goals. What are y'all working on? What are your dreams and goals for the fourth quarter? And even if you don't have any, guess what? It's not too late to put any together. Some people have completely thrown in the hat for 2020. Don't do that. God said everything that he made was good. And if you look back over it, you know, he's never left us. He's never forsaken us. God has never forgotten about us. Don't write 2020 off. Don't get on that negative bandwagon with people. It's a waste of time and energy. So, y'all, I'm screaming. These are coming out so cute. And I tell you, I'm about to go get a white pair and put some black lines on it. So, I'm getting these done. But, yeah, if y'all know any agents internationally, real estate agents or real estate brokers, I need... Um, Specifically, I'm going to be honest, y'all. Please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm specifically looking for an African-American broker in London, UK, Dominican Republic, and um, Germany. That, that was the request of my clients, so that's what I'm looking for. So if you know anyone, please let me know. And again, I apologize. I don't mean that any kind of way because I don't mean disres any disrespect to anyone, okay? So look, so... Super cute, see? Y'all, I'm a fan. I'm gonna paint another pair right quick. We're gonna do, let's do a base color in white. Well, like a cream color. And then we'll do a base color in like a brown. Cause I think they're just gonna go so perfect with um, 
sweaters and stuff like that. So let me go rinse the brush off, paint these bases, I'll be back. Okay, you guys, and guess what? I'm so excited. My mom, I had asked my mom when school started with the kids, I said, mommy, she said, what can I do to help you? I said, please help me on Wednesdays because Wednesdays is like my crazy day where I go back and forth with Caleb dropping him to college and I have to go up there, I think it's three times in the same day until we get him a car. And so even though it's only about 35, 40 minutes up the road, it's a lot of time in the car. And so Wednesday is a day that I completely work remotely from the phone and I will park in the parking lot of a Zaxby's or I'll stay on campus where he is and I'll work from the car. Like, look y'all, I don't care when the Lord, when I told the Lord, not told, when I asked the Lord to bless me to sell beach houses down in Wilmington, North Carolina, I didn't have an office at the time. It was a while before I got an office. It was probably, I was down there probably two or three months before I ended up um, getting a free office space with one of the mortgage lenders I was working with. And guess what I would do? I would drive to Wilmington. I would leave right after I dropped the kids at school. I would go down there. It's almost a two hour drive, but I was committed to selling houses at the beach. And it was just always a desire of mine. And so the Lord opened a door through one of my friend's moms who happened to be getting out of real estate. And she said, come down, I'll show you the market. You know, I'll help you as best I can, you know, with clients. She did, she referred me some clients and I just got started that way. And believe it or not, it's funny, all of my clients came from the Northeast. So from Pennsylvania, um, Raleigh, North Carolina, Delaware, um, Chicago, it was really weird, right? Because you would think that if you're in North Carolina, a lot of your clients might be coming from North Carolina, but every market has its own target of where people come from. But anyway, I digress. So I didn't have an office. Now, anybody else could have used the excuse, well, I'm going down here. Where am I going to work from? I said, God, I already know if you brought me down here, you're going to open the door. But in the meantime, I'm going to set up at Barnes & Noble. I'm going to set up at the coffee shop. I'm going to set up wherever you bless me, Holy Spirit, because we're going to make it do what it do. And when I tell you it was such a blessing, I would work from Panera. I would work from the local little coffee shops. I did not mean to do both of these in this beige coat, <laughs> but I was talking. So now we got two beige pairs, so we're just going to keep it going. And um, it was just so cool. And so even now... You know, when you think about, I'm like I'm working in another market as well, the Lord has blessed us to expand back into Raleigh-Durham because we're going to be doing some things there with clients. And you just got to be willing to make a sacrifice for a little while, right? So there was a few months later, I was actually, um, I had been given a free office space. I was faithful over the few things. And what does that mean? I was faithful over working from my car and I was faithful over not having access to um, an office space, but I had a phone, I had a laptop and I had a car and I had air conditioning. And I said, God, we're going to work this all the way out. And the Lord worked it out because I was willing to make a sacrifice, just like many of you are willing to to make that sacrifice, do it. Go all in and say, God, I'm going all in. I'm not just going to be halfway doing something. I'm not going to halfway cherry pick and, you know, nitpick over the things you've called me to do, God. I'm all in. And so whatever you do, it says, do everything as unto the Lord with excellence and not unto men as men pleasing, right? Do everything with excellence. And when you do everything with excellence, the Lord is going to bless the works of your hands, right? And you just got to be righteous. But if the Lord sees you doing and you may say, well, it seems like it's taking a long time. I'm doing everything I need to be doing. Keep doing it, right? You're one person away. And I know you've heard this before, but you're one person away from massive, massive success. You're one person away from your business exploding. Just don't quit. Don't give up. Don't quit. Okay. So I'm going to do this pair in all white. I just need to go rinse the brush right quick. And you guys don't make up excuses. I mean, my um husband, when he was pledging a fraternity, one thing that they had as a slogan, there's some poem, I think, but it says, um, those who, was it? Excuses are the tools of the incompetent. They build bridges to nowhere. And those who use them seldom go far. And it's a pet peeve of mine, like when people join me or partner with me in business, like um, in our credit repair business, any other businesses I've done in the past, right? Um, when they always say, oh, I don't know anybody. Well, the average teenager knows 600 people. Y'all see, I got quiet right there. The average teenager knows 600 people. The truth is fear says, I don't know anyone. Fear says, I'm too busy. Fear says, I don't have time. Fear says, I'm overwhelmed. 
Fear says I'm scared to talk to people, but people be on the phone all day, every day talking about absolutely nothing, right? So that's fear says all those things. But guess what people should be afraid of? Being broke, not having enough to take care of their family. I'm not going to let fear stop me from doing what the Lord told me to do, right? Because the fearful servant was the one that was given the one talent, right? And what happened to him when the Lord, when his master came back? If y'all don't know the story of the talents in the Bible, the parable of the talents, you got to go read it. Um, when the master left and he gave a ta one talent to one of the servants, he gave two talents to the other and five talents to the one. And he said, when I come back, I'm going to expect, you know, you to have done something with these talents. I want to have interest on my money. So when he came back, the servant that had two talents had multiplied it. And he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I'm going to bless you with many. And he gave him four cities, I believe it was. Don't quote me. You got to go read it for yourself. But he blessed him doubly over what he had, right? The servant that had five talents, he blessed him with 10 cities. He doubled what he had given him because he was faithful over the few things and he multiplied it, right? But the servant that had the one talent, he said, what did you do with what I gave you? And he said, well, I knew you were a hard man that, um, that, um, basically, um, harvested where you hadn't even planted. And because I was afraid, I buried it. And so most people want to say that that's related to talents, but no, technically it was related to money. A talent was a form of money. And so we can say it was, it was money and his opportunity. And he buried his opportunity and didn't do anything with it. And so the master called him a wicked and faithless servant. And he took the one talent that he had, gave it to the other servant. And he said, those who um, have more, ha those who have will be given more and those who have not, even that will be taken from them. So what is the, what is the parable? What is the lesson that the Lord wanted us to learn? I've given you talents. Some of you have one, some of you have two, some of you have five, and I'm expecting an increase on my money. That's what the Lord said, right? He told us in Genesis to occupy. He says, multiply, be fruitful and subdue the earth. And he placed everything under our dominion. He gave us dominion over every single thing, including our time, including our talents, including our contacts. And it says in Matthew 7 that those who ask, receive, those who seek, find, those who knock, the door is open for all who ask, receive, all who seek, find, and to all who knock, the door is open. So it's not true that God is not answering. It's not true that God doesn't want us to have great things. The truth is, are we doing what God told us to do with what we've been given with so that he can multiply that into more? I'm just asking, but only each of us individually knows the truth to that. I'm going to go wash the brush while those dry because we're gonna. I just got inspired to make what? One, two, three more pair and we're going to keep going. God bless you. Stay tuned.